Hey everybody, my name is Eric, and I have fantastic hair. Um, also, I'm making a game. That game is called The God Killer. It's a 3D puzzle-solving adventure game. And uh, let's demo it. Let's demo it. Let's demo it. Or at least a portion of it. Man, I'm so tired. I'm so tired today. I'm sorry. I'm just a little tired. I'm just a little bit tired. Not not huge tired. Just a little. I mean, I'm going to be okay. I feel raw. I feel like I've been crying all week. Like I've been all week. That's how I feel. Somebody asked, how you doing? That's how I'm doing. I feel raw. It'll pass. All right, let's hit the play. I'm going to play this song one time, too, in this session. I can't keep listening to it again and again. Oh, little nothing, you have strayed. Oh, little nothing, you are afraid that all your pieces fell apart. They fell below. A little nothing. Where did they go? We see you here, your sad little face. Come to cry, come to beg for our grace. Can we put you back together? Yes, we can. Can we put you back together? Yes, we can. Can we put you back together? Yes, we can. Will we put you back together? That's the plan. Cause we got the knife! We'll fix you, we'll slice you, we'll bite you, we'll grind you, unwind you. Because we got the knife! We'll find you, we'll hurt you, we'll hurt you, we'll advise you, we'll prize you. We know we got the knife! We'll see you, we'll feel you, we'll beat you, complete you, we'll bow you, we'll pow you. Okay, there's uh, dramatic scene in the game I've been working on for a while. The most recent thing to go in is that the mouth movements are synchronized to the voice. Now, on the broadcast, on the stream, because of my broadcasting setup, you're not seeing the synchronized audio with the lip movements, but it is right on. It's exactly on when I'm not broadcasting. So there's no bug there. There are a number of refinements still to make to this thing. And at some point, I'll stop making them and say, good enough. And I'll even know there was probably something else I could have made better, but I'll just let it go. Um, but lip animations for that scene are done. So this session is just going to be a, a grab bag of uh, fixes and refinements. I might start with this assertion failure. Yeah. Another thing I'm noticing is that um, these files that I created that have all the the timings for the animations, phonemes are called. Um, there's an instruction at the end. I'll show you what these files look like. Each file corresponds with one one line. Okay, so if you see this, this is for the line "come to bake." There is a phonetic representation of that line inside of this file. It's a simple text file. And in between these phonemes, like K is a phoneme, there's spaces. Each space is 1 24th of a second. It's kind of a, a 
a, a conventional frame rate for authoring lip animation. It's a, it's a good enough kind of frame rate. You want your frame rate for lip animation authoring to be a good trade-off between the amount of time it takes to, to edit all the animation, which is, you know, less frames per second is, is, is less work, and uh, showing believable timings of mouth movements. 24 frames per second is, uh, is pretty good for that. And even then, in, in truth, there's one more cheat to that to make it go faster. Um, which is most mostly mostly say in events on uh, they call them the doubles. So you, you basically most of your lip events are going to be around 12 frames per second, or at least it's usually not good animation for lips to to move them in closer because then the, they seem like they're moving around too fast. So, anyways, all that. Uh, there's one symbol at the end which means just close the mouth. That's the rest. That's the rest symbol that I added there. I suspect that assertion is it's not able to parse the rest. Uh, so all of these lips files are, I did last night. I have a tool, it's called face tool that I wrote. It let me, lets me do these really fast. So I think I spent maybe an hour doing the lip animations. It would have been, uh, Less time too, like most of that was manipulating all the files. Uh, that tool could still use some streamlining as far as uh, uh, setting up each line that you have to provide timings for one after another in sequence and just saving the results. So that, that part of it still needs some work for productivity, but the tool works. So this assertion I'm guessing is, is for the rest event which was not showing up in the animations that's where his mouth closes at the end um, yeah okay let me change this to is phoneme car. And then we'll come up above. No. Oh. We'll change this to is phoneme car. check in here make sure I've got a mapping I think I've got yeah okay this goes it maps to rest so visemes are the the specific visual representations that correspond with a certain utterance uh, I have a set of I forget how many maybe it's nine nine visemes it's a standard Preston Blair animation sheet there with the visemes. And so all of these on the left, they're phonemes, and each one maps to a viseme. So this is, the phoneme is the sound that's made, the utterance, and the viseme is the visual representation of it. So this is the mapping that's used for that. Okay. So let me, let me see if that change fixes the, both the assertion and the absence of rests at the end of the lines. And like I said, I got to stop listening to that song again and again. So turn off the volume there, hit play.
Yeah, I'm seeing rest because there were a few lines where it ends on O. Oh. And uh, they used to just stay on the O. And now they're going to rest. I'm also taking note of different things that this scene still needs. Um, that fix the assertions too. The most notable thing is there's no sense that she's getting hurt when those knives come down to stab on her. There's a number of things that should communicate that, but they're not. They're, they're not in. Um, should be a body animation. Her expression should change. thinking about some other effects too well okay another one is oh goose I'm making refinements to a scene it's all about dying and the weird shit that happens when you die in this game what's going on with you I've got the the sound turned off because I've just heard this song so many times it, it's like it's gonna drive me crazy but it uh, actually syncs up with uh, voice animate, uh, speech animation. Uh, rough week at work, day job. And uh, I, I don't wanna go into details cause like the, the stream might get around to people at work and all that, but yeah, tough, tough week at the day job. How you doing? Cool, cool. Yeah. Da, da, da. Uh, let's see. Well, let's see. Let's start making a list of the things I want to fix. This is done. This is done. 121 in six months in which I was told to come up with my own personal development. <laughs> this is no objectives for me. God, I hate those things. I hate them. Man, I, I spent like a, a weekend at, at work uh, just fiddling around with one of those things that was required of me. Hate them. Uh, and then whatever objectives that you put on there, whatever objectives you put, it feels like you've just, uh, you know, become your own boss to harp on yourself to, uh, to uh, fulfill all those goals that you gave yourself. Find inside something you want to become better at. And so how, okay, here, here's the thing to figure out. Who looks at those things and, and what, what, what for, you know? Because some of them, to be honest, nobody looks at them. So that's like the starting point to figure out like, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's the starting point to figure out how much time you're gonna spend on those things. Yeah, I want a different job than this one, <laughs> is what you're saying. Where do I see myself in five years? Working at some uh, three other companies by then. I've gone through three of them. Um, working at any other place besides this. Yeah, I hate those things too. And then 
they put all the work on the person being evaluated to come up with their own little torture for themselves. In a new job, yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I've gotten really angry putting those things together. And then when I ask my own reports to, to do them, I just try to make it as painless as possible. It's like, here's the minimum you can put in there and it will be fine. Okay, that's done. Okay, uh, let's see. Character animation for getting hit by knife. I also feel like I've got one trick I need to do, which is make it seem jarring that the character got hit by a knife, but not change the the gameplay in any way. So I can't just fling her across the room whenever an animated knife hits her because the, ba the basic engine of the game is turn-based or stepper as I like to call it. She shouldn't move until a command's issued or she, do she actually issues a command and something reacts to it and maybe knocks her across the room, but the knives are kind of like in a, a separate timeline that's not a, affected by the turn-based stuff. So whatever animation or reaction I put in as a response to the knives hitting her um, needs to not really affect the square that she's in. So I might experiment with a camera shake with knife hit. But might be a nice general effect for the camera. If I do something like I've got a camera mover, I already have a camera mover class, but I could add like a method to it, like bump and then float Y angle, float amount, something like that, distance. That could be fun. I could add that in for uh, for other things too. It's got a, a simplicity to it. An interface like this, I, I can see it not being tightly coupled to anything else and it's just here. I can call it for different things in the game. I kind of like that. Uh, the other thing I'm considering is Maybe some special, special case 2D art. Showing, uh, let's see, overlaid to show um, hit by knife. Okay, once I get this all reasonably worked out, then I'll move this into the proper level and it'll just be part of that. But this is the stuff to fix up first. Let me start with this one. This one, uh, like my imagination is caught up in it. I'm kind of tired tonight, so it might be good to pick things that are, are uh, lighting up my brain a little bit. Okay, so let's let's do that one. through here. Okay, so I'm looking at my public methods. Uh, and okay. Put this in it and then 
The ones that get called as we go are onboard change and set target. Set target is usually for special case animations. Um, I mean, I could reuse set target again, but I think it's a better idea to apply an extra offset. Um, okay, so let me write out my design up top. Just thinking about what would look good. I, I think a good bump is probably it knocks it quickly in one direction, an attack, and then just a little bit later there's a decay, or it's like a it bounces back to where it was. So it bumps to an offset, and then springs back. Now, I could get fancy and do sort of a like a shuddering bump type of a thing where it's it's like a, da, 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 da. it's it's like a series of vibrations and then the, it goes to the offset then it comes back but not all the way and then goes to a smaller offset then comes back kind of like a I don't know like a, a a swing set that you pushed up and then it comes down and then the, the amount of energy in it dissipates. That might look better. This might be something I have to play with a little bit. Uh, might also be worth seeing. Oh, here's another thing I can demo. A uh, new character art came in from Isak. Uh, these are previews. He hasn't given me the models yet, but I'll replace the 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 uh, placeholder graphics I've got or the models for beards now they will actually have beards and this beard is supposed to uh, spring straight out when they are in their aggressive mode if you step on the grass they get they get mad about it and their beard points straight out kind of like a penis on his on his chin um, then this guy's the song leader he's a fancy man Patterned after Liberace. This guy, <laughs> a little bit. I mean, it'll visually be a beard, but you know, they get excited when you do something wrong and the, their beard points straight out from their face when that happens. So it's just a little bit like a dick chin. Uh, then these guys, there's two of them, uh, and they'll just sort of like be backup people for the queen. One will stand on each side. And uh, yeah, so they're coming along. Some good low poly work from, uh, from Isak. Let me close my stuff that might be somewhat sensitive. There we go. And also I'm working on my Steam page over here. There's so much shit to fill in. So much, so much, so much. Goose, have you ever set up a Steam page before? And I know you've been around different aspects of uh, game development. I wouldn't be surprised if you had. There's just, just a lot of stuff to put in there.
Okay. Oh, yeah. I came over here because I wanted to see on YouTube. Um, let's see. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. You've done like store submissions and stuff, so I, you probably have some sense of it. Um, let's see. Camera bump effect. Oh, let's just keep it in game development by saying Unity. Oh, brackies. I like brackies. Let's see, let's see what he has to say. Game is by using camera shit. Whoa, it's great for emphasizing action and making your camera feel more part of the world. So in this video, we'll go over how to make your own camera shake. And towards the end, I'll show you how to set up an awesome tool that I personally use to shake things up. I don't yeah. really want to know how to do it because I know because how to do it. Also, this video is sponsored by Assassin in Unity, where every time I click with my routines before, I just want I examples that I can visually look at. For now, at. we're just going to power through. Whenever you're working with coroutines, you want see. to make sure to have using the fade out time, and I'll set that to 1. And if we save this and play, voila! We now have a much smoother camera shake that is both easier to use and allows for much more in-depth yeah. control. Pretty this is going to be hard to find the exact thing I'm after. Because um, most camera shakes are kind of like what he did, where it's sort of like random chaos, and mine's going to be more like a directional... I'm just trying to get a sense of like, is it worth putting in those residual vibration type things that die down to nothing? Oh, actually I actually have not a decent example of my own game to look at. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me try that. Yeah, just occurred to me. <laughs> I already did something a little bit like this. Uh, okay, let's hit play. And let's immediately stop it. I don't want to hear the song. I'm just tired of the song. There we go. Now I go to the restore screen. Yeah, that's got a little bounce to it. Uh, it's kind of the opposite situation because you're coming to a stop. I should I should try it with the like the trivial version of the shake first and then see if it needs the the dying off version the the I don't know what the quick term is for it the, the vibrating version all right Figure that out later, whatever that is. Okay. Yeah, it wouldn't be that hard. Now I'm, I'm picturing the, the offset, how to do it. Okay. So, number one. Let's do, let's say the, the method, camera mover. It's gonna be. Bump. So Y angle. Um, and then. some public constants or typical params. Okay, that's basically what gets called. Um, and I think there's going to be a, a state like Float. 
pump them out. I'll be right back. And it occurred to me while I was peeing. Uh, this is better if it's distance. So I can be thinking in terms of meters. In my game, a meter is one square, one grid square. So it's pretty easy for me to picture that rather than a mount yeah, and then I was just picturing it in my head it does seem to me like uh, I don't need the, sh the vibration or shutter just visually just it seems like I don't need it but it shouldn't be a, a linear spring back it's kind of like a uh, like the camera's on a rubber band, you knock it one direction and then it comes back. Rubber band pulls it back. So that's probably like a, a sign function. So this, this is gonna be like, okay, we'll calculate the bump offset. And this, uh, this doesn't matter. This, well, this should be bump distance. And uh, the bump start time. I think for the moment, I'll just make all my, my bumps be the same duration. Const float bump duration. I, I think this is it. I mean, I'm, I'm writing so much code, I might as well just move it down. I don't think I'm really exploring ideas at this point. Um, all right, let me 
just finish the other part that might be slightly, slightly tricky. Someone's telling me about a problem they're having. So I'm a tiny bit distracted by that. Uh, okay. So the other part is um, inside of explicit update or late update actually. Okay, the position's gonna get set here. I can leave this as it is without messing with it. I can just add the bump offset to it. So in late update, I need to calculate in late update calc the bump offset is a sign function over duration Sorry, someone's having a pretty bad problem. Okay, so yeah, this is, uh, I don't think I need to do a number two option. This is pretty straightforward. All right. One thing I think I will do is, uh, I just started doing this, but just putting like these inside of their own class, things that are all together. Uh, so, stick with it, but it kind of makes sense to me. It might be bureaucratic, I don't know. All right, so let me say All right. 
Good set duration too. No, I just feel like I'm only gonna need one duration. Okay. Uh, okay, so this should end up setting all the values for the bump. I also wonder too if how important the attack frames are. Maybe it should really just start at the, at the peak where it's all the way bumped and then spring back. Eh. Let's maybe there's probably gonna be something in between. Like I don't want any the attack to be as long as the decay. It probably the attack is truncated a bit and then the, the decay is uh Maybe four times as long or something like that. Okay. So, uh, values to set. Bump values is bumping. Equals true. Bump values. Bump start time equals now. I don't even need the distance because I'm just going to calculate the offset. Okay, so let me think about that. a vector too as well. Since I'm only doing x and and z axes. Don't need the distance. Okay. So we'll say float dx equals the distance times, uh, oops, I said dz, float dx equals distance times uh, cosine of y angle. And uh, let's just allow myself to pass in degrees, it'll help me a little bit. So if I do that, then that means I need to multiply this degrees to rad. Yes, like so. What? What, 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 what? What are you complaining about? Double, you want to double. Okay. I suppose here you probably want to. Okay, let's do that. Float. Okay, so DZ. Pretty good. Then, uh, last thing is some function that late update calls. So, let's just get rid of this. I no longer need it. Uh, 
it set at one time. If we're bumping, okay, let's say we'll pass in bump values and we'll pass in um, ref next position. can do next position equals there we go better this way because then I don't have to do a new and copy values over okay Let's see, we'll say it's got to be super fast. So let's do 0.05f and then decay duration. Let's do it fifth of a second. I should do it. Okay, so if elapsed is less than attack duration say return okay if let's see. return and then some stuff in here okay if elapsed is less than decay duration to do return okay then third case we're we're all the way at the end of the, the bump. It's no longer bumping. And there's nothing to do. We do not adjust the position that's, that's coming in. We don't adjust it. Um, yeah, that's basically it. Okay, let me just take one more look at this whole thing. Wait, update. Okay, yeah, so I, I do need to have one other thing, which is uh, 
if not as initialized or not, oops, not is moving and bump values. It says bump, and that's a not. Turn. Okay. So back up here, I want the ratio of progress inside of the elapsed period. So for that, we'll say Float attack ratio equals Okay, attack ratio equals uh, elapsed divided by attack duration. So that gives me a number between zero and one, where zero is I've just barely started the attack, and one is I'm at the peak of the attack or the, the furthest out um, from the bump, uh, for the bump distance. Should be all the way at the, at the bump distance at that point. So decay ratio is elapsed minus attack duration divided by the decay duration. Okay. I think let's even do less than equal in this. No. Because if it's if it is at the decay duration, oh, this is that includes both. sine wave because I always forget okay, 0 to 90 degrees uh, okay 180 degrees is 1 pi so 90 degrees would be half a pi we go zero to half a pi. And then for the decay, we go half a pi to pi. Or I could just invert it and go half a pi to zero. Okay. So let's see.
attack ratio radiance. So then let's make this be something that gets set with one. Uh, nah, okay. Uh, I'll refactor it once I, I get it in reasonable shape. Okay. So that's the bump amount. And then. Vector two bump offset equals okay between. Vector two zero, I think, is a constant. Yes, and uh, bump values. I gotta give it a different name, maybe, and then we'll say bump amount. Okay. Um, position. X plus equals bump offset D. Oops. X. And I would just add it, but I'm mixing vector twos and vector threes here. Be some more stuff down below, but uh, so I can. Oh god, this is getting complex. <sighs> this is where I'll, I'll screw up. All right, I need more variables here. If I try to do it all in one line, I'll, I'll start screwing up. Okay. So here I'm saying my decay ratio that gives me a little bit of trouble because it's not a real concept uh, that's expressed easily in English. Okay, what am I what am I getting first? I'm getting the amount here. Let, yeah, let's break this up into more variables. That'll always help me. Float um, elapsed since decay equals elapsed minus attack duration. Okay, then I won't keep staring at this and kind of. 
trying to figure out what it is. Okay, so the K ratio is that. Ratio between will be the number between zero and one. Um, but I want to flip it around because I'm going the opposite direction. So let's have this be one f minus this number, and then I'll start out with it at one, um, and then this this will be the same, or I should say this will be. K ratio times half pi. So that will start me out at the beginning up at, at 1 or 90 degrees. And it will go to 0. So then I can use basically the same code here. I think this is definitely copy and paste code to be refactored. Yeah, I, I think an easier way to write this code is I'll say uh, at the beginning, we'll invert this a little bit. If elapsed is greater than equal to bump duration, So we'll say float, bump amount, or bump radians might be a better thing to return. So let's do that. So we'll say if elapse is less than the attack duration, bump radians. Equals that. Move all this down below. Okay, and here this can just be a simple else. this note I'll, I'll waste five minutes later figuring it out maybe more okay that looks not bad it's gonna take some walking through to make sure the values are right um, okay let me just uh, I'll logically walk through it I'm saying the attack duration is a 1 20th of a second decay duration 1 5th of a second Overall duration is attack plus decay. Half pi, convenience variable. Uh, amount of time elapsed since the start of the bump. If, if the whole bump's over, we'll turn this off. We'll say uh, is bumping is false. We'll stop this function from being called. 
this position that was passed in will have no bump applied to it. We just return. Okay, then we say, since we know that we haven't gone past the full duration of the bump, we're either in the attack or in the decay. So if elapsed is less than the attack duration, uh, we're in the attack portion. And the radiance for the bump radiance, which isn't really an angle at all, it's just um, an input to the sine function, which can be used to make a, a curve of sorts. Okay, we'll say bump radiance is how much time has elapsed um, divided by the attack duration, which gives us a number between zero and one. Multiply that times half pi to represent an, an a number between zero and 90 degrees to pass into this sine function where 90 degrees will produce a full bump value and zero will produce zero. You know, curve towards that, that full bump. Um, so it won't just in a linear fashion go right to it. Okay, so then back up here, uh, if we're in the decay portion of it, we say, okay, let's get the amount of time that's elapsed since the decay portion okay so that's elapsed minus attack duration okay that's fine so this should be a number between zero and decay duration uh, this zero divided by the or this value divided by the de decay duration gives us a number between zero and one but we invert it so that at the beginning of the, of the decay we start out with one and we go down to zero. Then, to give us a smooth curve, uh, we assign this to the bump radiance by multiplying this zero to one by half pi. And that'll cause us to begin at that 90 degree mark on the sine curve up here and go back down to the zero degree mark on the sine curve, which is like a curved return to no bump at all. Okay, then we say, let's get the offset between no bump at all, zero, and all the way bumped the full distance that was asked for when I called the bump method at the beginning. Bump amount is coming from the sine function so that we get the smooth curve. Then we take the original position that was passed in, we apply an X offset, and a Z offset, I um, put this comment here so I don't confuse, don't think this is an error. Um, I don't wanna change the Y position on the camera because that's vertical and for my game, since it's all, always top down, there's just no value in bumping on the, on the Y axis. That seems correct to me. Um, let's set breakpoints there and there, I also need to write some calling code. Um, what's the best way to do that? I don't want to wait for for the points in the song that have bumps. So I don't want to hook that up yet. I want something that I can just kind of click a little more easily so well, let's do an inspector inter interface okay to do delete public bump angle Distance uh, and then a little trigger.
Okay. That's got a, I'll, I'll give it a 20% chance of working the first time. Uh, let's build it. Hold on. Oh, that's a, that's a good warning. That's a great warning. Uh, let's see, do I have a start on this? Where am I initializing? I like to have all my initialization in one place. I don't like to put some in the variables themselves yeah, in it. And that's probably a good one. Let's do it here. Okay, so bump values equals new bump values. Okay, now can I get a clean build? Okay, come back to this guy and let's turn off the maximize. Uh, go. No, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. Uh, okay, main. All right, so there's the bomb. We are bumping, we're bumping now. This will be zero. Uh, did I set a distance? I did not, so this will be zero too. This will all be zero. Bad first test. Uh, okay, <laughs> so. There's no hope of seeing anything on that particular call, but it looked correct anyways. Okay, and this one. Bump right hands will be zero. Bump amount will be zero. Let's see what it looks like when I have different elapsed. Okay, now we're a third of a second. Oh, that should be past the whole thing. It is. Okay, cool. Let's do another one with an actual distance. DX should be either one or negative one. Okay, cool. Um, DZ should be zero. Cool. This one I don't really care about. Let's do another one. Okay, what's our elapsed? Third of a second again, so it's just gonna skip past. A little hard to see anything going on there. Um, I will want to Set break points down here, I think. Don't think I need this anymore, so I'll let it play. Okay, here we go. Elapsed. Something less. Than, well, okay, not that one. Do another one. And. Decay wasn't called, oh, it's because I'm in the debugger. It's one of those things where it's a little hard to see the calcs when you're in, I mean, you got all these short timing values. All right, let's just, first let's just do a visual check on it. Hey! Not exactly what I want, but it's something.
Like I would have thought the bump distance wouldn't have been so whoa so far, but so let's let's do uh, ninety degrees. See what that does. Nice. Okay, the only thing that's kind of fakaka is the bump distance. Pretty good start. Pretty good start. Okay, let, me, let me see what happens if I just, just make this really small. Point one. Constants so zero is a bump west. Okay, let's go to camera mover. Oh, stop. Let's do one diagonal one just to make sure we're still good. There we go. Bam, 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 bam. Uh, make attack shorter. Just to have it, give it a more violent feel. Now I gotta look at the calculation for this bump distance. It seems off. This part I know is getting set correctly. Okay, let's set a break point for this guy. Since decay zero, good, perfect. Yeah, this is good. So it'll be just a little bit drawn in from the full bump offset. Um, You know, maybe that is correct. Maybe it just it just seems like a lot to me. See. Yeah, you're doing just you're bumping by one meter. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. Okay, let's set this down to something smaller. Okay, let's go smaller. I feel like to get the 
attack and decay right. I should probably... I don't know. I don't know. No, it's just... Just set them down faster and see, what, see how it goes. So we'll say uh, twice as fast. And I think, let's remember these constants. Fixing the little nitpicks. shot. Yeah, that's a good bump. That's not too bad. Let's see if I can hook it into the, the knife stabbing you. So if I come back to uh... Yeah, I feel like doing something cool right away real fast. Let's do this. Uh, fling effect. No. This one, okay.
All right, let's go ahead and just make it a little simple. Set 2C, 2C on the set from C. Set 2R on the set from R. It should be done, not in the constructor. It should be done down here in perform. Self bump bump angle and just a little little bit. Okay, so that doesn't hook anything up to the knives, but it might let me have a cool bump with my flanks. Uh, let's try that. Assertion failing, what's that about? That's weird. Okay. So it should. Oh, this is greater than. Okay, got it. Uh, oh. Really? Oh yeah, because it because I had it in the break point, it was never caught the shift up, so it thinks I'm still flinging. Okay, uh, a few things there. 
It might be that this one needs a, a larger bump for it to be shown. Um, this goes here. Let's just make this 1.f, 5f, that kind of thing. Let's try that. I think it was bumping. I just don't think it was doing it in a way that you could see it very well with the camera already moving. Yeah. I'm not seeing any bump at all. Let's just make it real, real fucking obvious. Let's just make stupid big. Okay. Just want to know that it's working. There we go. Oh, it's bumping in the opposite direction though. Bumping right at the start. It might not be a good thing to use with flying. I thought it would look good, but I don't know if it's ever going to look good because the camera's already moving. That's the problem. did on this I just want to use my get powers to revert it peace flung effect To the thing that I should have stuck to in the first place. Okay, when the knife. The knife hits the player. So we'll say if the stab amount, let's see. Now I should use this change here from uh, going from stabbing to withdrawing. That would be the time to, to bump. Okay, so. We'll say if we're stabbing. And let's do. I need for this. I need to figure out the angle. For that, I'll need uh, the base position 
in the transform position. So we'll say vector three base position. Vector three target position. And then I, I, I wrote a function to give me the angle. Um, geometry utility. Is that right? Who? No, this isn't mine. Um, trig utility. That was it. Angle between points. So we'll say our angle from the base position, base position X, base position Z, target position X, target position Z. Okay, and then we'll say float angle equals plus the stab angle. Uh, I want to see if this is supposed to return radians or degrees. Yeah, radians. Cool. Okay, so if I've got now I can't make up my mind if I want degrees or radians. Now that I don't really have any utility for this northwest southeast stuff, let's yank that out. And let's just have the values put in be radians. So we'll say radians. in the camera mover too. Bump. Stab angle. And I think I figured out that uh, 0.2F is a decent distance. All right. So I'm gonna pass these things in. So this will be base position. Uh, target position. Camera mover. So did I get did I get rid of all the junk in the level controller? I did not. Should probably get rid of that. But anyways, I'll clean that up in a moment. They wait a long time to start stabbing. If it doesn't work, I'll 
adjust it so that they stab throughout the song. Oh. <laughs> it works just like I wanted to it works oh that's great that's great that's nice and chaotic I like it all right I got a decent camera bump now let's just do a little cleanup and that that's got to be the end of the session I'm just too tired to keep going uh, so level controller, no. New is with death box. Do I just put it on death box? Yeah, good. All right, get rid of this. up here. I'm going to finish this stream in just a moment. Whoever's with me, I'm saying good, good night now. I'm saying my goodbyes at the party. Doing that thing. Hey! It's getting late. I got to head out. It was a great party. Thanks for hosting. I'm hosting though, it's my own party. So metaphor breaks down. Okay. Um, we got the knives, lips, and then um, knife, stab, camera bumping. All right. Good night, whoever is still on, and I'm going to stop the stream right about here. Stopping the stream. Now.